Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 994. So you might have seen this machine before or not. I don't blame you if you haven't because this is a machine I repaired the power supply in uh, in 2021. So three, about three and a half years ago, it was early 2021. So there is a video on that. In that video, I repaired this power supply because uh, it didn't power on the system. It was a donation. It was said to power on, but sometimes didn't. But when I got it, it was completely dead. So the caps had all just started leaking, probably after it was tested. So that made it not power on. So the power supply is like completely recapped. You can have a look inside that later, just, uh, just so you can see how it looks now. The next problem was the floppy. It also the caps fell off of that one. I had corroded off basically. So that is recapped also. We need to recap the motherboard, it's not done. And the hard drive is dying. So last time I did a video, I tested an older version of this motherboard from uh, something called uh, the LC1. So this is X, uh, more or less an LC3. So it's two versions newer. Uh, this particular machine is called the Performa 450. I don't know exactly the difference between the Performa 450 and the LC3. They seem to be used interchangeably, the name. It's just the Performa 450 on my front panel uh, up here. But as I understand it, the motherboard are essentially the same. This motherboard needs a recap also because all the other caps have been bad and the motherboard caps are known to be bad. And there is some kind of wetness to the board in the surface here. But not exactly under the cast, but uh, there seems to be some corrosion. But I do think because this case is actually leaning backwards. Uh, you can see here. So it's sitting like so on the desk. I do think uh, an electrolyte is basically flowing backwards or downwards. So yeah, I did check a year ago and I clearly remember seeing electrolyte on it then. I think it's kind of dried up, but it's like this sticky substance uh, on the PCB now. And then we've got a bigger problem here, it's just the dead or dying hard drive. This uh, hardly starts anymore. It spins up and then spins down again. To solve the motherboard, I have some parts here uh, left over from the last video. I got some SME caps for the board. I got some caps left over for, from the power supply, I think, and some other components I collected. And then we got the important thing here, because uh, back then I was looking at buying a Buscasi, but due to human malware, um, the original Buscasi ship it used was always out of stock, so these were hard to get. And then the Buscasi 2 or V2 came out, which is this one here, which used the Raspberry Pi Pico, so I got the uh, the Pico W here, the wireless one, because you can actually use that uh, over the emulator SCSI bus as like a SCSI modem. So anyway, I bought this kit recently, it was delivered like a week ago I think. So you have to solder it together, you can buy it pre-soldered, but I actually don't want to do that. I don't have it pre-soldered because I actually want to install these uh, like so. So I can easily upgrade or change out the, the Pico. So this will solve my hard drive problem, plus this thing, like I said, can do wireless. Uh, basically emulate a modem on SCSI but they can also do floppy and CD medias so this is nothing new to people who are, who are into like 68k Macs and Amigas these have been out for a couple of years there are plenty of videos on that I just, I just didn't have one so that's also what we're gonna do so recap the board and build this kit and get the OS up and running again because as it is now the hard drive is basically dead and I kind of knew it's gonna go that way when I got, got the system because it made a horrible noise uh, when I got it so yeah, let's remove the motherboard. Uh, also, I did get uh, a stick of extra VRAM here. Uh, out of another board I did. Not gonna spend too much time uh, showing the recap of this board because the LC1 board is very similar. And I did the video on that and it wasn't that popular. But uh, I did make it extra long for people who like to see me soldering because some people actually do that. Uh, so it it was for them mainly, so I figured I'd make this one a little bit shorter. <laughs> a lot shorter on the actual recapping of the board because it's basically 99%. I think it's one cap that differs from the LC1 board I did. So yeah, this is SCSI based. Uh, for those who aren't using Max, uh, 618 Max. So there's no ID on this one, this, that's the problem. You can't just throw in like an ID to sort it out here. You could probably do SCSI to IDE and IDE to SATA and then SSD, there are adapters, but if it will actually work, that's... Uh, and it won't be cheaper than the blue SCSI V2 anyway. I don't think I had a motherboard out of this thing, so... 
And it looks like you're gonna slide it until there and then lift it up. One of those systems, typical Apple, you need to take everything in some specific order, more or less. Yeah, this comes in like a hard eye cage and I count it on there. Uh, because I figured I make some holes here and mount the Bruce Some people use that adapter, you can get 3D printed for it. But uh, I think just uh, the holes on the Bruce Gassi in the PCB are for the 3D printed bracket. But I figured I could use uh, mount it straight to this piece instead. I won't use anything else anyway. So this is the motherboard. So this is the VGA RAM. It's slightly different pinout, I think, to the uh, ordinary one. It has a few pins shorter. Uh, it's 68, 68 pins for that one and 72. So it's uh, not like a 72 pin you could, as you could expect if you're not aware of that. But uh, it allows me to run 16-bit colors, I think, instead of 8 bits. This is a half a megabyte and you can add a quarter or a half a megabyte, but you only get a quarter here, so you get 768 kilobytes here. And you can up to 36, so this should be 4, and then you can up to 32 in the slot there. And I think mine is 8, so you're gonna have 12. And this is uh, for a coprocessor, FFPU. So this is the Motorola 68000, or this, uh, this specific version is 68030, at 25 megahertz, uh, so no. Uh, FPU built in, so you need one here. So this is like a 386 uh, more or less in performance. It got some on board L1 cache, uh, 512 bytes, so half a kilobyte. And half of if you then have to split that in data cache and instruction cache, so about 256 bytes per type of uh, L1 cache. So not a lot. So I'm, like the 386s would have external cache, can have a lot of it, like 128 kilobytes I've seen systems with. But yeah, that is it, and um, yeah, an expansion slot over here, you can have uh, like an upgrade CPU, but the most common thing I think is the network card, which I would like to have. So these caps, from what I read everywhere, they are basically guaranteed to leak or go out of spec, so you can buy recap kits uh, in a lot of places, it seems, like a lot of retro kind of stores. But I'm gonna put up an Im image of the values, but you can find them all over the internet, so, because it's a common problem on these old machines. So. I have uh, covered up all the plastic sockets with uh, some aluminium foil. Some of it has paper underneath, like uh, thick uh, cardboard. And then there's cap and tape on top of everything. So that should uh, hopefully protect anything from melting. Because we're gonna use the hot, hot air station to remove like the cap down here, caps up here. So I think you can see kind of like the wetness here. Look, there's some old photos I took when I got the machine. I couldn't see that, but uh, yeah. I think what's happening that happened with power supply is that when you power it on after many years, um, the overings at the bottom of the caps leaks within a few days. So, can I look over here because I had a photo of this one. Now it wasn't that good, but I should have seen something. But you can see these like pools here. Yeah, you see this. This is this must be electrolyte, and I think when it's tilted backwards, this flows down downhill. So these have leaked and you can kind of see some signs of corrosion. That's also why I want to do this because this is going to be a pain. Like I think you can see clear corrosion here. It's not like corroded to death, but it's definitely not uh, like a glossy nice surface there. And those wires could corrode away. So yeah, I want these off, clean this board, put some new ones on. Clean it up a little bit here before we remove it because it's probably gonna spew out electrolyte everywhere. Had a very weak smell of fish, but uh, yeah, I checked this like a year ago, and that's why we're doing this because it's it is somewhat urgent. Uh, it hasn't corroded it, this thing to death or anything, but it's gonna do it eventually. So yeah, when I got my blue scassy here now, I really want to do this. So because this machine is otherwise good shape. Uh, it smells like fish now. Yep. 
So you can see underneath here, uh, you got some dry electrolyte and obviously some wet one and some corrosion. So yeah, and then one of the caps really popped. Uh, And it seems like they've done a little number of that pad, but if it's anything like a floppy, I think it's perfectly good pad under all that corrosion. So yeah, this is why you shouldn't just look at caps uh, and uh, think they're fine. I could I have, I have checked before, so I've seen signs. But I mean, to, uh, if you're not, well, I'm not trained like professional or anything. I just recapped a few boards over the years. But I mean, to the complete untrained eye, this might look fine-ish, like uh, not a big problem. But uh, with, especially with SMDs, uh, a lot of time, all the corrosion is hidden by this plastic. Uh, pad here to stabilize it. So I'm just adding some new solder here, so because of the corrosion. Uh, these weren't bad, but uh, corrosion tends to increase the melting point of old solder. So it is easy to add some before wicking this. I did also add some flux. But these caps over here hadn't caused that much corrosion like the other ones that we did first. I think these clean up nicely, but I think these were the easiest ones in terms of uh, fixing any corrosion. A piece of corroded tin that they want to melt. So that's what corrosion the electrolyte does to the tin. Luckily, it seems that the pads are intact. On the floppy, the actual legs and the caps went first. So that's a good thing. Better the caps and then the tin, and last the pads. Because as long as you have nice pads, everything is easy. Uh, 
and all these like black little dots floating around look like soot. It's pretty much also corrosion like uh, oxidization and probably electrolyte. It's my guess. So all caps are removed and the pads are cleaned. Let's get some caps into place here. Yeah. We'll start over here. So my plan is to put the second one on this corner over here too. Then turn the board a little bit to get in between.
I have put the motherboard in the oven after cleaning it with some alcohol and water and so on. So it's gonna be in there for like an hour. So I figure we move on to the blue scassi and assemble it. So there is a Wikipedia with all the information basically you need from like assembly if you're doing that and to like the software and everything. But uh, there are uh, quite a few jumpers you can put on here. So definitely one for lead over here. Target initiator, I think that is if you want this to act like a SCSI controller basically. We, you can do more things than just having this as a disk or like a drive. I think you can clone uh, other drives and do th things like that. So probably won't need that, but I think you need a jumper in itself to disable it. I'm just gonna, I looked at the wiki, they didn't install all the jumpers. But uh, looking ha at how it would come from the Geek Army, I think it was called. They had one here, which we're not gonna need a jumper on, so we put that in there. Not gonna put that one in, I think, because there's an LED and I don't really have an LED on the front of the Mac. I also need a jumper over here on this one here, so I'm gonna put that one in. Yeah, I don't recall what all of them do right now. It's on the wiki. We're gonna have to set the jumpers properly later so it works. Yeah, also this initiator here, so I think you need that one too. Uh, it's not a, it's only a two pin header. But I think I do have both of those on or off because they're both initiator. So we start with this. It's always so much easier with the brand new PCB. No corrosion and all shit. So I said I want to add some uh, basically a socket here. So I bought these for a uh, Pico project I did before the, the uh, fan controller. Worked out really nice. I've seen some uh, YouTube videos where people also have uh, these mounted, so either they have added it or some kits include them, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. Like, I don't think this thing has like signaling problems with the added height and stuff, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. I just added these to make sure the spacing is correct. So I'm just gonna start doing the corners. Just in case I need to realign it. Let's solder them into place because it looks good.
So I'll take a put on the SCSI connector now. Next up will be power. Not sure if power optional or not here. I think I read we could power it off the SCSI connector on most machines, but on some list I saw. So I don't know if it's needed or not, but uh, yeah. I think that's most uh, of it, or all, all of it that we need. Now we just need to solder these onto the actual Pico. It said on the wiki that uh, when the bike hit that this thing comes pre-programmed. Maybe it does, I don't know. This V2024-015, okay. Yeah, they probably open it. Yeah, so this should have firmware on it. That's good. Yeah, probably gonna upgrade it anyway, but... Uh, Always nice if it works out of the box to begin with. I think I'm gonna use this uh, my breadboard here. Can be a little bit difficult getting it out um, with 40 pins. So. Yeah, that seems to sit straight. I just want something to hold the thing. So we get straight and nice legs. And uh, the USB connector should be on to the right. That seems to fit. I'm not gonna put it in yet because I'm gonna clean up the big PCB here. Give it a wash and a dry. But then we can uh, put some software on uh, this. Uh, put an image on it, hopefully boot something up. I have prepared this uh, with some holes here that matches these holes. Now we can't just screw that into there without risking a short 
So you could buy this when I bought this from uh, Geek Army, I think it was called, with a 3D printed uh, like bracket. And there were three metal screws going into the plastic. Now the thing is here, these uh, layers at the back I think are all ground I think here. But we've got a trace over here that goes over to the connector and the outer pins, so that's 5 or 12 volts. So you could imagine like a screw here going down here and uh, removing the solder mask on uh, this plane here and that and then you have a short. And if you have a standoff the same thing can happen. And uh, on the other side here from my measurement this is ground, this plane is ground. But that is not, that goes to this voltage regulator here, so maybe 3.3 volts, I'm not sure. So it's fairly easy to solve that problem on both sides with something that insulates, like paper shims or nylon. You can also use nylon screws, which I don't have. Uh, considering people use, uh, well, the kit you can buy had steel screws on the image uh, going through into the plastic. I think it's fairly safe, like using steel screws, but I don't know. It depends who designed the, the blue scassi and uh, the people like making them are not necessarily the same. So what I'm worried about, because this is metal, now I could uh, get a short from one uh, screw to another. Where if this was plastic you couldn't like connect say this part here with that uh, ground there or there. But the nylon shims should fix that. Then I have an old trick where I put some sleeving on the actual screw. You just leave the part on top where I need to get the nut on. So we're gonna put this together. So if you do what I'm doing, it's on your own peril, as they say. I just don't want a lot of parts I don't need. These heads are a little bit tall, but there is quite a bit of clearance underneath, so I think this should be fine going to the Mac. So the plan is for these to be permanently installed. So I'm gonna just uh, put some uh, nuts down here nylon, with a nylon washer in them. So they, uh, they're lock nuts basically. My plan was now to put uh, well, these nylons on here. So that's gonna space it up even more. But, uh, and I think we should have enough height for one of these we're gonna have to try here. Otherwise I have longer screws, I just don't want them to stick out too much. Should really have to be a little bit longer. My plan now is to put in some, put some shrink wrap. So, this should uh, insulate everything. Hopefully we can get this thing on again. It's gonna be tight though. That didn't work as planned. Now, I did try to measure the inside of the PCB, like if there's any continuity to ground and stuff, and I didn't find any, so I don't think there is. Some new nice probes, some springy ones, stick and uh, pointy, sharp. So, could shake. Yeah, so the screws are already grounded to this, which is obvious. And let's see here, but it doesn't seem to be anything there. I'm 
know that plane here was connected. Yeah, so there doesn't seem to be like any connection internally, like uh, the doesn't seem like the screw is touching any middle layers. But yeah, it's hard to know if the layers internally goes all the way to the edge of the hole. If the like uh, it looks like on the top and bottom layer, the end like a millimeter from the edge. I don't think they're actually touching. So as long as you don't use screws, they screw down like erodes the hole, so to speak. So let's put this in the actual blue uh, the RPA Pico. So, before we mount everything together again, the computer and everything, we need to put some jumpers on here. So we got the termination on and off here for SCSI. So we're going to have termination on. Then we have power on here, which should be, if we put it to on by putting a jumper there, then we're going to use this connector here. Uh, otherwise, I think you have to use the USB here. So continue with the jumpers. We got the target and the initiator. So target left, initiator right. So target, I'm guessing, is like uh, when it acts as a hard drive. Initiator is more like if it acts like a controller card because apparently you can use these to clone hard drives. So it's gonna be on target. But you also got a second initiator here, but there's no target. Just two pins, so you can put the jumper on either one side. You just hang it off there. This seems to be what the guides and the pictures are, are doing. So this is the way I understand it's the proper configuration to use it as a hard drive slash uh, floppy slash uh, optic unit and draw the power from here. So yeah, I should have an uh, SD card here somewhere. I haven't prepped it yet, we're gonna do that next. I have uh, mounted my SD card and it's formatted as FAT32. I think you can use 16 and EXFAT also. So I downloaded uh, the, this image uh, from uh, from the guide I had at cloud uh, storage there. Now here is the guide to SCSI. SCSI images, so I went there to get that one. But there is a naming convention, so the SCSI knows what the files are. So for example here, H the X, Y, so you need to replace X and Y. The X is the... Uh, SCSI ID and why is the learn and learn as not supported so that should always be zero but you don't need to actually put it in so you can see some examples I think here somewhere uh, HD6 so no no learn there but that uh, HD50 which is actually the uh, SCSI ID5 learn zero and then you can tell it the sector size if you need so 512 for example there I guess we need an underscore not sure and these are all different things, so like CD, optical, floppy, so on. So the way I want to name it, I think it says HD0 there, but I think in all examples, I think one is default. Image is just ID optional, if not provided, defaults to one. Zero to seven support up to seven devices at a time. Yeah, so it defaults to one, so we could rename this like uh, this. HD1 Mac OS 7.5.3 for example the name I think this should be fine for now so this should actually boot I think when one way to find out before we put it all together again I figured I'd take some new footage of the power supply so it hasn't been on for quite a few months so should have been a risk of me shocking myself here, but always be careful. So I put some word caps into it. Uh, they have red caps. But uh, yeah, what killed this power supply was the red one, the small one down there. Uh, this ship here that it basically turns the MOSFET, I think, is over there on and off. Through this transform transformer, and then we got some diodes over here, I think, to basically turn, turn it back into DC, proper DC, that isn't chopped up again. Uh, so you got 5 volt, uh, obviously you got 12 for the hard drive. But the, uh, this thing when it tries to switch and that cap is dead. Uh, the voltage is too unstable so it just crashes is effectively. So that's uh, what the fault that I fixed in the previous video two and a half years ago. Plus I obviously recapped the whole thing because they were all leaking. But yeah, I'm gonna put this back together. Let's start with a motherboard here. Sounds, uh, 
Everything else gets in the way otherwise. And those notches. Should be able to push it in here now. Can hook uh, up the floppy here. So this should be the VJ RAM. Or the V RAM. And this should be an 8 megabyte stick, I think. For a total of 12. Like, I obviously want 36, like everyone else, but this, on a 386 performance kind of machine, I don't think. Every minimum requirement I checked is like 5 6 megs of RAM for things I could run on this thing, so I think they're fine. Right now, I just want it to work, so. I'm not gonna put any battery in here unless I have to. It's probably is for the CMOS because it starts up just fine. And honestly, don't really care what year it is. Just gonna do it like that for now. So let's see here. Connect this up. Like I said, I think you could run power off here, but uh, uh, I'm just gonna use this temporarily. Because my plan is to remake this one to be a floppy connector instead. Just to reduce the cable clutter. But for testing this will work just fine, like so. And we are actually ready to power it on and see if this thing still works. Uh, the question mark I think mostly is the blue scassi here. We are ready to test it now. I have put the SD card in it. I almost forgot that. So yeah, let's go over to VGA here. And it's, uh, this power supply is one of the stupid ones. You just turn it on the back and the computer starts. Mouse. No uh, hard drive indication of any kind. Looking for image. Guess it didn't read it. Something it didn't like with that one. Hmm. Yeah, we need to investigate this. Uh, with the first attempt, there was a couple of problems. Uh, the SD card, one gigabyte one, uh, it, it's intact. It works. I can write to it. Like put the image on, but this thing can't see it. Uh, five flashes five times and then repeats five times with a small pause in between. Uh, this car I put in now is a 4 gigabyte one and uh, it wrote a log file to it so it found that one so I put uh, the image on that instead. So we're gonna try that now. Hopefully this thing boots up. Oh, it found the image, finally. So yeah, the SD card comp compatibility with my old cards were kind of crap. I also did it in between just a 2 gig card that I got from somewhere, a Lexar, Professional, whatever. But this thing is kind of broken, it seems. It's, it can't write the whole image without the card uh, disappearing from the system. But I think I should be able to screen capture 6 4 4 8 since I had this VGA adapter, so we could hook that up. So, let's see here, I have mounted two uh, CD images, I was actually trying to do one CD image and one floppy, but uh, I can't get it to show up here, uh, the Blue Scouts is log report finding a Mac uh, image is fine, but I did find a WinWorld this uh, image, uh, ISO instead, I don't know if it's just this Mac, I can't... Uh, use floppy image for some reason, or if all the images I found of stuff it. And the reason we want this we can, uh, is that we want to open zip files, it's like zipped files but for Mac. And uh, everything is uh, packed in zip that you can download, so yeah, we kind of need this to get anything else on the system. But yeah, this looks promising. I agree, what else should I do? 
Well, let's do a new one here and do programs. Like some order. Install. So once I have everything installed, basically I could uh, just remove these images from the card or rename them to something that is uh, not formatted correctly, so it doesn't load them, I guess. And uh, then I can do a backup of this hard drive image once I have everything on it that I want. That's kind of the plan. Yeah. So I think that should have done it. It's not a speed demon. Let's see here. Now we should be able to open some zip files. I tested before and there was no stuff it installed. So I want to install a game here. Because it was one, one of the first things I played on a computer. Acquaintances of my parents uh, showed me their Mac. A power PC 80 MHz. He was a teacher. Basically I got into PC and computers. But yeah, he was a Mac user. So let's see here. Lemmings. Yeah, so this is sit. Let's see if we can open that. Might have to pull it over to the hard drive since this is an, it's an ISO cut right to it. But we'll see what it will do. Okay. Uh, do I need. I think maybe I can do like this. Uh, select the destination folder. I think we can do it like this. Can we go to desktop? New. Let's see here what we got. And this seems to be both disk images and something called patch in here. I, just, I kind of want something just ready to run. Okay, then that's not a problem. So you can set that down here. Try that again. I have some patience with these old machines. They're not fast, that's for sure. It seems like we have something that works. Okay, nothing. Oh. I think we can close this down here now. Like so. Level one, just dig. Press mouse button to continue. Okay. I haven't played Lemmings since I was a kid, so this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> this is hard play. Huh. I didn't have any of those. I have nine digging uh, vertically. My capture card is lagging a bit. I had a problem with this freezing before I figured Mac had hung, but I think it's. I don't think the capture card really liked the signal. But, anyways, we got level 1 done. <laughs> anyways, it's working, so that's like good. Yes, 
guessing that's the only thing we have here. So that was Lemming. Let's quit that. I sure want to quit playing. Yes. So yeah, we can throw this away. We don't need that. Now we can empty the trash. So yeah, I have a few more things to install obviously from this uh, disk, quite a lot of stuff if I want to try everything, but yeah, that's future me problem. I'm probably going to put a nice background here, obviously. I did notice that if I shut, don't wait a little while and shut it down, it's going to complain, so I think like the disk is caching for a while. So yeah, give it a few seconds. So the Mac is done here. So we got the blue scassi over here. I think it turned out pretty nice. We did not uh, need uh, any v any uh, cable here for like the floppy. Uh, it gets power through the scassi connector. It's fine. So this can just sit there. So no need for an adapter. So the what I read was correct there. And yeah, we got some RAM there. We also got the extra VRAM so we can run 16 uh, bit colors. And obviously, I have new caps here. You can see. So, yeah, that is the Performa 450 Macintosh, also known as the LC3. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.